Yeah, so we, we called to order. Um, the elementary principal team learning. We have take one down we've and all seen this, but I'd like a little bit, a little bit more <laughs> narrative. Like I said, I have my koozie yeah. on my... Uh, I would just say that we the whole thing started with um, so knowing that we were going to the PLC Institute this summer, but you've heard people talk about that already. We, the, book, the book study that we did was from the Solution Tree People, um, knowing that we were going to have that training and then use that training. Um, and also knowing that we've talked a lot about reading the last this past year and even yeah, this year. that's for sure. And we have had concerns that math is not getting the attention that it needs. So we have made that um, all of our goal setting and things that we're doing um, as a team to grow their capacity to do observations and give teachers feedback, um, focusing in on data in our conversation. So collecting data. Um, when they're out visiting in classrooms, but also having um, math data that we're using. Um, we have Tina Lemons from CC7 that's working with us. Oh, yeah. um, yes. And she comes and works with the principal team to do um, learning for us ahead of the teachers and helps us with goal setting, but also just what is a good math, what does good math instruction look like with our Bridges curriculum? Um, so we're just doing a lot of a real tight focus on math this year. We're also continuing with reading, but the new learning and the new things that we're doing are math related. Uh, and we're really working well as a team and the elementary team is very um, cohesive in the work that they're doing, all using the same Google Forms for observations, etc. So we're pretty excited about the work. So do the math, are the, are the principals saying, wow, I'm glad we're doing this? Uh, yes. I mean, or, yeah. and because, you know, well, they obviously, that, so that's a, are gonna say that's, that's, a, that's a reflection of their, they say, well, I'm glad to know this now, you know, because I didn't know it. Yeah. They were very excited yeah. to learn more about math because yeah. there was just so much PD for um, reading last year. Yeah. And with some of our principals being newer, it's good for us to, to do that work and have that focus. And they are very positive about it. And um, So it's real professional development. Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's cool. Huh. Um, is that just for our information? That is just for our information. Yep, just keeping you aware of the things that we're doing. Okay. The this the thing that well, I are we are we going to do the Boys and Girls Club grant? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's next. Well, that's yeah, I'd, I'd like to an explanation of what the club is. That's great. Come on forward. Uh, we have guests oh, today okay. that can help us. That's good that. because yeah. I read through the I read through the document and that's just the memorandum thought, of understanding. But we did want to give just a. It was nice know. that we were going to do this, but I had no idea what we were going to do. <laughs> Hi guys. Thanks. Oh, good. I'm glad you're here. You just want yeah, just do an inter yeah. introduction. Just show me a little bit. Tell us, yeah. yeah. Tell us, give who you are. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. Athena Martin. I'm the program director for the Boys and Girls Club oh, good. Washington. Okay. Okay. And then I also run a program at Keele Middle School. Okay. And I'm Chad Rickard. I'm the dean at Washington. Oh, good. So, okay. That's good. We, we communicate quite often. Yes. So whose idea was this, first of all? Well, I would say it was kind of a between Lee and um, me and um, somebody from, from CISA 7. Yeah. So uh, Stacy Opali, who was a principal in our district, um, who is also works with CISA 7. Mm -hmm. She is also on the board for Boys and Girls Club. Okay. And so recognizing an opportunity and the potential need in our community, she alerted us to this grant opportunity. So then um, Chad and I and, and the administration at, at Washington and our team here really worked with Boys and Girls Club of Fox Valley to write the grant uh, last year. And then when we submitted it, um, we, we found out you know, over the summer that, uh, or close to the summer anyway, uh, that we were awarded. How much was uh, the grant? 100,000. Um, it's a five-year grant. But the grant uh, amount is based on you know, a number of factors, including how successful our program is at meeting its goals through our activities that we have planned. And I'm going to let our uh, resident experts talk a little bit more about what the programming looks like. So, and I guess as far as the structure, like when we talk about the term wraparound services, this allows us to have 
three extra hours at the end of the school day from three o'clock until six to support our students both academically and mm -hmm. through interests. So as far as the different programs, mm -hmm. um, you yeah. know, as far as what, what we have, um, enrollment right now, we're... We, so right now we have 26 registered students. Um, we have about 10 to 15 coming every day. We're working on getting the numbers up because for the grant, it's gotta hit like 40, 40 yeah. yeah, 41 or something like that. Um, and then as far as programs, 41 students, students, how students long coming every day. So an average, coming every day. Oh, yes, wow. so an average daily attendance of 41 oh. to 55, I think is our grant tier. So who's selling it now, you know, with the kids? A um, lot of conversations as we, it, as it becomes part of our culture, I think that's the biggest thing is, is to shift into this culture where we have the Boys and Girls Club as part of, you know, Washington. I think it's just, you know, organically having conversations with teachers and, and okay. students that need support. Um, you know, it's having conversations with community members. Um, you know, they have a marketing plan as far as, you know, how it gets out. Okay. Uh, but, you know, we're always, it's continual conversations. And okay. the brand, their brand doesn't need to be built. But as far as it being part of Manitowoc and our schools, it does. And there's also the Boys and Girls Club of Manitowoc County down the road um, off Dewey Street. And a lot of the kids that I'm seeing now previously attended that branch. So it's building in more kids that can attend because their age cutoff, I think, is 11 or 12, whereas ours then goes up to eighth grade now. Yeah, I want to back up a few steps because we just kind of, so the scope of what you guys represent is middle school students at Washington and Wilson. No, so just at Washington. No, right? so um, we offer the program to anybody in the area, sixth through eighth grade. Oh, we are at I Washington see. and primarily serve Washington students, but um, we have one that's enrolled and she's homeschooled, and we have another one from, I don't remember the school. Right nope. Um, right German. First German. First German. Yeah. Um, that also occasionally attends, but primarily it's at Washington. Okay, so I just want to clarify. So it's open to any middle school student yep. at any school in Manitowoc County, essentially. Yes. And the facility is at Washington Junior High right now. Yes. And you are not affiliated with Manitowoc County Boys and Girls Club on Dewey we, Street? We are. So you are, but the there's grant that's that's so, separate completely. yeah they're a separate building they're a separate site um we work in collaboration with each other similar to what's going on in the fox valley we all work together okay. um but they're separate locations they run differently they all have their own directors okay but it's open to anybody and and, and then is there busing to washington from three to six or from how does that work or is it just right now that's a good question but yeah currently we don't have a need for busing um, well, you, I was sorry to interrupt, but we have a need or a want to get our numbers up to 40. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. So as far as public transportation, that's something that we can, you know, we can offer or have, you know, have offered. So um, if the need arises, that's certainly a conversation that we'll When they we'll register to be a member mm -hmm. with the Boys and Girls Club of Washington, um, one of the questions on there that the grant requires us to ask is, is transportation a barrier? Um, Hmm. That hasn't been checked yes on anybody yet. If that were to, it would be up to us to find a solution to break that barrier to make sure that they can get there or get home, however. What makes this uh, unique different than the Dewey Street experience um, so, or staffing? Because right now, is it a stipend that you guys are paid or how are you so we're compensated? paid through the... We're paid through the Fox Valley. Um, Boys and girls. Yes. Oh, okay. So we're not paid through the grant or anything like that. It's through the Fox Valley. Um, as far as staffing and the differences, we're inside the school, so there's a different kind of connection with what's going on in the school day okay. and the curriculum they're getting versus what we can offer at Boys and Girls Club, whereas the branch location works completely on their own. I think they bus for most of the elementary schools, but they primarily serve elementary age. I'm just a little confused because I'm, you know, obviously we got to communicate to get this out and mm -hmm. help and understand because you're a district employee, but you're not. Yep. Uh, so I'm, yeah, and I'm not 
I'm not getting anything extra for, yeah, this is mm -hmm. just part of. Okay. You know, but the club is the name of the group, right? And these people, as soon as they come on, become members of the club. Yes. What are the activities? What do you do? So we offer a very, very long list, but to keep it okay. a little shorter, um, we do STEM activities. We offer like a tutoring time. We call it power hour. So if they're struggling, they're behind in school, okay. their teacher reaches out and says they need extra support. Okay. We offer that every day. Um, we offer various art programs, visual, digital, performing, okay. applied. Um, we offer peer connection opportunities through team building games, structured activities, high yield learning activities, um, which is more of the academic enrichment. Um, mm -hmm. We offer an SEL curriculum that's built through the Boys and Girls Club of America. Um, there's a couple different curriculums there, um, and then just general SEL programming. Mm, okay. And career launch is another big one. Yeah, that's good. And there's, I mean, as far as opportunities for community partnerships too, you know, that's definitely something. And you know, as we have more and more conversations, it's kind of like, what do we want to focus on, like? I mean, it's this big. So this is discussed within the group, I would yeah. say. And they, the kids say, well, and we, we do some, some, something like this. So a lot of what I try to program for the kids is interest-based. Um, we also offer times that could be built into the schedule that if five kids came up and said, hey, I would really like to play chess every Wednesday at 3.30, Great. Okay, let's block off 20 minutes every Wednesday to go do that. Mm -hmm. um, very much so interest-based to get the engagement and the participation. Mm -hmm. Do you do you guys lease um, area at Washington, or is it donated by the district, or how, how is that working? It's part of the grant. It, we're, it's it's a partnership. Yeah. Okay. How is your staff? You know, how many staff members do you have that come into the? So I have myself. And then currently three other part-time staff. I'm looking to still hire another full-time staff, which would be 30 hours a week, and kind of oversee the daily programming and the day-to-day. -day. Um, and then exclusively your hours are three to six, Monday through Friday. Is that correct? Um, as far as club open hours, yes. Yeah, you know. I I am there all day. Yep, I understand that. Yeah. I'm saying when you're you there opportunity for you're there all day? students to be there. <clears throat> Three to six. Right. At Washington New Drive. Yes. So what kind of communications have you done thus far to try to promote the program besides so, internally? Prior to the school year starting, there, I believe, was a couple press releases yep. that were put out, um, Facebook, social media, um, the location on Dewey Street had reached out to all previous members that had either aged out or currently attend, promoting that we have this new club opening. Um, I did a short, very short informational meeting wrapping around the sixth grade camp meeting last week. I think that's the bulk of what we've done so far. Do you think there's any opportunity to get any students from Wilson or? Sure. I mean, I guess just transportation barrier what you said, you know, trying an opportunity to get them over to Washington? Yeah. Okay, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Well, thanks for asking them. Yeah, so then just uh, <clears throat> the goal would be that the committee could uh, forward on the memorandum of understanding uh, that needs to be approved by the board. Um, you, Heidi said there was some changes, right? The new city. We took it off. So in our conversation, oh no, it's on now. Yep, I know. But yeah. there was just so there was a, there was a clause thing. because the original document that we had uh, talked about a fund eighty. Oh, yep. Yeah. So yeah. so that that's not necessary, and it was because we had used language from another district, so we removed oh, the language okay. from the fund. So it was just editorial. It didn't change the it's just editorial. Correct. Correct. You know, I want to I want to ask something. I mean. Um, You know, I taught for years at, at the UWC, and, and, and you know, and while I was very encouraging to women students to, you know, really like do it all, the people that really sort of bothered me more and more over the years were the, were the guys at the back who were generally intelligent, but were sitting there with their baseball hats on backwards and trying to be macho by being dumb. 
and I, I and I thought, wow, there's 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 a real maturity thing here with 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 boys in many ways, and I think that we all knew that. Even even you know us boys, we knew that it took us longer to longer to mature than it did girls, and and um, and. Um, and then I, I, but then I got into some of the literature on this, and there's there really is a problem with with male students, males in general, throughout Western culture, and 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 it's like certainly they identify they identify the problems of maturity or you know sort of slower maturity, things like that, and and boy culture is pretty pretty. Pretty deadly and deadly in terms of anti-intellectualism. I mean, if you take piano lessons, boy, you're not a boy, you know. Uh, if you if you're if you're too smart in school, wow, well, you, you know nobody nobody wants to associate with you, et cetera, et cetera. So that I'm real concerned about you know male students not 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 going back on what's being what's what's being done now. It's really working really well for female students who are. 60% of the university students in the country and and now rapidly becoming the dominant the dominant players in all the all the professions but the only place the only place in western culture where they're doing anything for boys at all is in the school system in Scotland not even in Finland which has a, a remarkably good educational system so you know and they're having a little bit of success now working on this what, what what's your observation? You've done this kind of work before. What's your observation on on what the club does for boys? So it's coincidental that you say that because we recently opened up a curriculum through the Boys and Girls Club of America that's called Passport to Manhood, and it's specifically oh, wow. tailored to that's teen really cool. and teen boys specifically um, because of that. So that's another program that we offer that kind of wraps around our other SEL curriculum. Yeah. So we have, not that the names really matter, but we have Smart Girls, Smart Moves, Passport to Man, no. That's great. Um, yeah, Passport to Manhood, and then Journey to Adulthood. Those are wow, our main really SEL curriculums that we use more lately to get everybody involved and to build our peer connections in the club. I've been using the journeys to adulthood. Um, if I had more staff and participation equally throughout the club and as we get more members, I'll be able to offer that passport to manhood as its own curriculum. Um, see, I'd like to be the only school, the first school in, in Wisconsin to like you know, take take some of this on seriously, because uh, I really think it's it's you know it's been too late in coming, and it, it's 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 just it's just a crisis in some ways. I think it has an awful lot to do with the behavior problems. So um, uh, yeah, move to recommend a full board for okay. okay. I know, I know. There's a lot of opportunities, and the more conversations we have. We have two willing partners, and that, that's a game changer, so, okay, you know. Are you going to be available for the meeting on Tuesday to, to, to field questions if there are any? I guess, well, can Tuesday? we get back to you? Sure, you can. Well, you don't get back to me. Get back to Heidi or... Yep. Yeah, yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, 6 p.m. That's Joe. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Yes, but there's no second. Is there a second? Yeah, one second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Uh, I just want to say that reading this over, there's lots of really great things in it. Yes, the district is contributing facilities, some equipment, but most important is that a huge part of this partnership is in making sure that this program understands what's being taught at the school so that as tutors, if you aren't figuring it out while you're trying to help a kid, you actually already know. So when they come in, you're like, oh yeah, okay, I know what you're trying to do here. So I think that part of this partnership will really, really work out really well. And the, the fact that there are gonna be kids for whom that period 
Fast. I, I know all middle school kids think they can be completely independent, but there really are going to be kids for whom having something structured to do from three to six until yeah, their parents right, are available exactly. is going to be a true boom. Yeah. That's all I want to say. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Or recommended to the board. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah, this is, I think it's really a kind of a neat thing. Yeah. It's good. Okay. My turn? Yes. Okay. Um, this is just for information and discussion. Just wanted to uh, give you a brief overview of our first staff development day, which is coming up on Friday. Um, as we've discussed, for a while, um, you know, our district is really going all in on supporting our staff to be better equipped to address challenging behaviors. And we've talked a lot about student behavior and our code of conduct and just how we're implementing some proactive supports and strategies to be a nice partner with that code of conduct um, so that we really just feel like we're going all in initially and then what my plan is is through the support of Katie Tennyson who I've shared works with CISA 7 is coming in and supporting our buildings throughout the year we'll be able to share the fruits of our labor labor for lack of better term um, just in regards to student behavioral data at each of our buildings as we have this ongoing support. So the plan would be, you know, laying the groundwork, putting these supports and strategies in place, going all in on our PD initially in the school year, and then I'll be able to come back and bring you student-specific behavioral data on a regular basis to this committee. So we can see if what we're doing is working um, and continue to have those conversations with Katie Tennyson as she supports our district through CC7. So that's kind of why I'm starting with this. So Brian Menler, who gave a keynote address during our first week of school, our in-service week, will be back for a second round of support as part of our initial payment through our Getting Kids Ahead grant. Um, so he'll do some on-site visits on Thursday all day with me. Um, we're going to visit our programs and our buildings where we serve our most significantly emotionally, behaviorally disabled students. He'll be meeting with teachers, paraprofessionals, and talking with building admin interventionists and those kinds of things. So just getting a feel for where we're at as a district um, and, you know, no better way to do that than to see firsthand how we're programming, um, how we're approaching some challenging situations potentially, maybe give us some ideas that we hadn't thought of, um, and then have conversations with our building leaders. And then he'll address all of our instructional staff or certified instructional staff or general education teachers and special education teachers on Friday morning from 8 to 10 at the Lincoln High School Auditorium. So you're welcome to come if you're available to hear that. He'll be digging a little bit, um, diving deeper into specific strategies for classroom teachers around relationship building, avoiding power struggles, de-escalating behaviors, those kinds of things. So he gave kind of a philosophical overview yeah, the first yeah. time he was around, and he'll be just getting a little meatier with teachers about very specific teacher takeaways. I also have his books available if anybody's interested in um, reading their short, quick little reads, but I'd be happy to share any of his resources that he's given to our district to share out with people as well. If you're interested, just let me know. Yeah. Um, well, that's happening on Friday. Our paraprofessionals are going to be at Wilson Middle School. So our regular ed paraprofessionals and our special ed paraprofessionals. And it's another group that we're really investing in skill building, um, providing strategies for with the efforts to retain these people who are critical to our programming and meeting student needs in our buildings. Um, so this will be the second year that CISA 7 will be running this paraprofessional in-service. So it's a half day this time around. They'll be um, able to be in sessions around understanding autism, understanding the roles and responsibilities of paraprofessionals, supporting in classrooms, um, resilience on their own. So, um, you know, finding strategies to keep themselves positive um, and, you know, working collaboratively in stressful situations. Um, then CISA 7 will come back in January to do another full day training. So we're really investing in our paraprofessional group again with the goal of 
keeping these really great hardworking individuals and helping them build their capacity and their skills to support and serve our schools. Um, and then everybody will come together in their buildings uh, on the afternoon of Friday to participate in reframing behavior training. So you've heard me talk about a crisis prevention institute. It's who runs our nonviolent crisis intervention training that all of our special ed people are trained in. Um, but then it also had a component that a few years ago, our whole district was trained in called verbal de-escalation skills. It's a way to help um, through strategies, recognize anxiety and students have strategies to de-escalate. Again, not engaging in power struggles, just gives very hands-on skills to our teachers when we're faced with some challenging behavioral situations. Mm -hmm. So reframing behavior is another CPI product, but it's cheaper, it's better than verbal de-escalation skills <laughs> training. It is, uh, it's more practical. It's not like there's not all these crazy training requirements like you have to do this before you can do this and you have to be certified X month. It's just, it's just good stuff. We also have access to online resources and things that we can continue to provide ongoing training for. So Lynette's seminar has done an awesome But it does the same thing, right? It does the same thing, yeah. but better, way yeah, better. better. Okay. So if you flip to the back of your page, there's four components to reframing behavior. Reframing your perspective, your awareness, your actions, and your relationships. So those are the really the four um, fundamental elements and guiding principles of reframing behavior. And then it gives really practical strategies under each of those sections. Um, so we'll be able through this program also to have ongoing resources and training so we can keep the conversation going. But every single staff member in the MPSD has access to these materials. And then our staff will participate in a in-person training on Friday afternoon, where you're just really applying the concepts, talking through scenarios, um, really thinking about how to implement this in daily practice. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's pretty great. Yeah, again, we have I have links. So if anyone's interested in listening to the reframing behavior training, it takes about an hour and a half. You can start and stop at any time. It's kind of like a cool podcast, but it's the language that our staff will be using when talking about. <laughs> it's the language our staff will be using when talking about students and classroom practices and things like that so sounds super that's friday yeah. that sounds like a rich day i mean really. could you yeah, could you email me the podcast yeah absolutely uh it's it's pretty good it's pretty easy listening it's just it's good oh you can you can email me yep i can yeah i can send it to the whole board if that's better and just say if you want here's the link and oh that's true again you can start start and stop at any time um, but our, you know, our secretaries are listening, our custodians have the opportunity to listen. We've shared with grant buses, so, you know, there's opportunities for just everybody working with kids to be on the same page about. Wow, that sounds really good. Sounds it's like a great with data. Day, but, uh, it's a very full day, yeah. very full day, and everybody has been so great. Our teachers and our, you know, support staff have been so great about getting some of this pre-leg work done and adjusting their days so they can get it done to engage in, in training, so. Um, It'll be full, and then I'll bring data back, and we'll see if all of this is working or not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Well, it will, won't it? I'm confident. Yeah. I mean, people people are so committed and working so hard, and um, so I'm I'm pretty confident that we'll see some positive outcomes. We'll know that by the end of October. Yes. Oh, you won't. You won't know that by the end of October. Yes. So, Heidi, what was the name of the two? Exactly the way to handle it. What, was yes. the, what were the names of the two people? Um, well, luckily, I was taking really copious notes. Oh, good, good. Uh, Tina Martin is the director of the Boys and Girls Club. Tina Martin. She was a girl. That's a Tina. Oh, I was uh -huh. not taking copious. I can Athena? get you her phone. Athena. Yeah. Tina Martin. I heard no. Tina. Correct. Too. That's the person who oversees her. Oh. That, that's Athena. Oh, okay. Her name's Athena. And Did she, she the director? Did she introduce the Yes, of the of and not herself? No, she said Athena. It just sounded like Tina. Because you're used to Tina. So now. what's her, what's her name? Martin. Athena. Martin. Athena? Martin. Yeah, okay. Athena Martin. Thank you. Nice correction. Thank you. <laughs> okay. In that, I am 100% confident. I did like, confirm. And the man? The man's yeah. name was? Athena. Chad Breckert. Chad. He's the dean of students at Washington. Okay, good. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. 
Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay.